Those fast-moving developments that Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl freed after five years as a prisoner of the Taliban. Tonight, instead of those images of him held captive, we now know he's at a U.S. military hospital in Germany, where we're told he's in good condition. His parents, who just 24 hours ago were being embraced by the president tonight back home, where there have been hugs all weekend long, yellow balloons up everywhere, this sign reading, Bo Freed. While in the Middle East tonight, a different homecoming, the images of those five Taliban detainees hugged upon their arrival in Qatar. The images tweeted out to the world. In a moment here, the backlash to their release right here at home. But first, those parents back in Idaho tonight. And we do have team coverage, beginning with ABC's Neil Karlinski in Boise tonight. Neil. David, good evening. It was a remarkable and emotional press conference. As you point out, the parents revealing they have not yet called their son, and they expect the entire process to take a very long time. After five years of waiting, Bo Bergdahl's parents came home to Idaho to address their son for the first time from a distance. We haven't talked to, talk to Bo yet. We haven't called him on the phone. Um, although you all know we have, the, we have the capability to do that with satellite technology. There's reason for that, and that's because Bo has been gone so long um, that it's going to be very difficult to come back. It's like a diver going deep on a dive and, and has to stage back up through recompression to get the nitrogen bubbles out of the system. If he comes up too fast, it could kill him. His father showing that beard he grew, vowing not to shave until his son was released. His mother showing the emotion any mom can understand. Give yourself all of the time you need to recover and decompress. There is no hurry. You have your life ahead of you. We continue in our minute-by-minute minute prayers for you as you go through this healing process, and we praise God for your freedom. Bob Bergdahl says his son is having trouble speaking English, but is otherwise doing okay. He took care to address Bo slowly and methodically, even introducing himself as if he might be seen as a stranger to his own son. I want you to know that I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of your character. But most of all, I'm proud of how much you wanted to help the Afghan people and what you were willing to do. You've made it. I imagine you are more patient and compassionate than ever. You are free. Freedom is yours. I will see you soon, my beloved son. I love you both. Right now, Bergdahl is at a military hospital in Germany. Next stop will be a reintegration center at a base in San Antonio, Texas, where he will eventually be reunited with his parents. David? All right, Neil Karlinski leading us off in Idaho tonight. Neil, thank you. And this evening, we're learning more about the effort to get Bo Bergdahl. The drones, the helicopters, and nearly two dozen members of the Taliban standing there as those special forces landed. ABC White House correspondent Jim Avila on that and on the Obama administration very pleased with how this played out. Everyone is happy. A good day. Yes, it's a good day. This is a joyous day. This is a happy day. The Obama administration rejoicing that Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is safe and being treated at Langstill Hospital in Germany. Beyond that, the very sticky details of his condition, physical or mental, are being discussed only in vague terms and pointedly as a justification for a prisoner exchange that also resulted in freedom for those five Guantanamo Bay Taliban terrorists. We needed to get him out of there, essentially to save his life. Hagel told reporters on his way to Afghanistan today he didn't know if Bergdahl had been tortured or exactly why his family says the sergeant is having trouble speaking English. Only that it's believed he was held captive alone with no other Americans. The risky transfer urgently arranged to the Oman of Qatar who dealt directly with the Taliban. With drones and helicopters hovering above the Afghanistan-Pakistan border, U.S. Special Forces picked him up from some 20 Taliban fighters, no shots fired. The noise from the chopper so loud Bergdahl was handed a pen to scribble SF for Special Forces. The soldiers yelling back, yes, adding, we've been looking for you for a long time. Bergdahl then breaking down into tears. But the murky details of Sergeant Bergdahl's original capture in 2009 were not divulged. A knowledgeable source telling ABC News he walked away from his post without his weapon. 
Secretary Hagel says that was not a factor in the decision to negotiate. He's a sergeant in the United States Army. Our first priority is uh, assuring his um, well-being and his health. Tonight, the happy day talking point has not spread to all quarters of Washington. The number one way that al-Qaeda raises money is by ransom, kidnapping and ransom. Uh, we have now set a price. But the line here at the White House is that he was not a hostage, he was a POW. And Americans don't leave their soldiers behind, even if they're held by the Taliban. David? All right, Jim Avila live at the White House. And as Jim points out, not everyone is happy with the exchange of those Taliban detainees. And as we showed you at the top tonight, those images halfway around the world, the hugs they received as they landed. ABC's Mohammed Leela in Pakistan with more on the images going global. There are the photos creating shockwaves. The Taliban celebrating. Here, the man in the middle, the Taliban's deputy minister of intelligence, newly freed, smiling, and later drinking tea. Another Taliban leader shaking hands with supporters. And this, the Taliban's former army chief embracing in a hug. The man no longer behind bars, although they won't be allowed to leave Qatar for at least a year. Their release even drew an incredibly rare letter from Taliban leader Mullah Omar, a man who hasn't been seen or heard from in nearly a decade, saying, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to the entire Afghan Muslim nation for this big victory. The question now is, will these men go back to the battlefield? Since 2009, at least 82 detainees have been released from Guantanamo Bay, and the statistics show that only five of them have returned to violence. Of course, that may not do much to silence the backlash in the United States. David. Mohammed Leela tonight. Mohammed, thank you. Our coverage of Bo Bergdahl coming home. Much more tomorrow morning on Good Morning America.